Hello there, welcome to the Kerbal Space Program 1.2. So, we're going to be doing a sandbox experience. Probably the best way to explain it. And by that I mean, we're going to be doing a sandbox game, but we're going to keep the Kerbal experience point. So when the Kerbals have no experience whatsoever, and you have to train them up in Korea, we're going to be doing that, but in a sandbox world. And I had to look around the internet for quite a while to find out how to do this, because I really wanted that experience on it. And it actually was Harvester that uh, had a post on Reddit that I found, which there'll probably be a link, maybe. Yeah, there'll be a link in the description to show you how to do it yourself, in case you want to do it. But I'm going to explain how to do it here as well. So, just very quickly, we'll start a game, and we're going to go to a new game. And we're going to give it a name, so we'll call it, I don't know... Exp. This is our experience game. Now, what you do is you choose a career mode, and I'm going to set up a couple of premises here. I'm going to say I want hard level, and we're going to have a re-entry heat at 120% because I think the default is a bit too low. I'm going to leave all of these alone. So there'll be none of these at all. We're going to ignore all these. I'm going to allow reverting flights and quick loading just in case it crashes. We won't be using them if we can help it. Well, we won't be using them really, but. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a matter of... They could crash occasionally because we've got mods in here. And just to protect against that, we're going to use these. Okay. Uh, missing crew will not respawn. We will be hiring our people by ourselves. Uh, we'll also be renaming the crew members to match subscribers' names. So, because I have, I have uh, a mod in top, which I will go through later on in this video. But we're going to be renaming crew members to match subscribers. Uh, we're not going to do technology because it's going to have a sandbox game. We will have destructible facilities because they look really cool when they explode. And we're not going to allow stock vessels. Very simple like that. Now we need a flag. Now, I would like you guys, if possible, to design a flag and send it in. And I will choose that flag, if I really like it, for a couple of missions. Maybe all the missions, depending on how the flag is and how many I get. It could be a one-off mission. It could be hundreds of missions. But for now, I'm going to go with that one. Which is what I created earlier. So I'm going to use it. And you'll, you'll see it in a few minutes, but in big. But we're going to start the game. Now, this is a normal career game right now. With funding and science requirements and all the normal things that go with that. So, for example, into the VAB. Thank you. And we have one pod, no, no fuel tanks, and one crappy little engine. Well, that's not what we're wanting. We're wanting sandbox. But... The thing we're doing, the reason we're doing it this way around is we want also our Kerbals to have no skills so we can train them up. At the same time, I want pilots to be pilots, engineers to be engineers, and scientists to be scientists. Whereas in Sandbox, they can all do all the roles. So, as a result, that's why we come to career mode. But in career mode, we don't want to tie ourselves down. Well, how do we do that? Well, very simply, now we're in the game, we quit. Might sound odd, but that's how you do it. Bring it back to this screen. Then you go to your save, so that will be under my YouTube file. Go to your save games, and you'll find your save game. Then open your persistence file. And this is basically, this is, in case you haven't looked at this before, this is actually your save game. This is all the information regarding your save. What can be done, what can't be done, all the different bits. And then further down, you've got uh, contracts you might have taken and all the normal all the normal stuff basically well the way it works is you find the funding tab or the funding scenario section this contains how much money you've got now if you're playing career and you want to just give yourself some more cash that's your cash you can just type that we've got 10,000 now we've got 100,000 now we've got a million now we've got 100 million now we've got a thousand million now we've got a billion all right very simple but what we're going to do is we're going to take this into a sandbox mode so we delete the entire module. The entire chunk, that entire section there for funding, we just delete it. Gone. Apparently the game sees that missing as, oh, you're running in science mode rather than career mode. Now again, we don't want to be in science mode. We want to be in career mode. So what we do is we run up here and we find, actually probably easier to scroll to the top, do a control F again and look for Research and look down for the section known as research and development. And again, if you're just playing science, you want to give yourself more science, 
you can just type a number in there. That's the amount of science you've got. So you can say, oh, I've got, I got 10,000 science now. Yay. Or you can do what we're going to do and delete the science bit. Again, science bit's gone. There's no science, so it's a sandbox mode. At the same time, we can get rid of the reputation system because if you're not doing career and you're not doing contracts, then why have reputation? That's it. Done. Save the file. Close it. Reload the save game, which is there, experience. As you can see, my testing one from earlier to make sure it worked. <laughs> and continue the game. Now, it's very, very simple. You've deleted those three pieces, so you told the game you don't use them. And the game says, oh, I don't use them. So now, normally, in the career mode, here you'd have your funding, your uh, re reputation, and your science. Well, nothing. Also, we can't get into the facility. We can still get into the contracts, because it is a career game. But they're of no use. And new contracts, from what I can tell, don't regenerate. So you might as well just ignore them. Big, big, big benefit is you can get into this room building. And all your kerbals still have no experience. No experience whatsoever. Yeah. Also, you'll have noticed, because we have no cash, but we've got the tier 1 facilities. Which means, if we come into the VAB, and we can't do research, all the pods are there. That's great. Only one downside. I put a pod and then a fuel tank. Immediately, I'm over the mass limit and the part counts really low. And I haven't got the cash to buy the bigger areas. Because, you know, the, the big VAB, the big launch pad. We need the bigger pads. So what do we do? Well, that's very simple. We upgrade and we upgrade. And then we upgrade and upgrade. And upgrade, and upgrade every single building, because there's no cash. So even though it mentions the amount of cash you need to do the upgrade, it doesn't check, it just gives you the upgrade. There we go. And we do the other little buildings. Da -da 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 -da. And then that one. And then finally, the runway. And we have a fully upgraded spaceport. All running nice and well. Now we can go into the VAB. And we can now build that rocket we were going to build earlier. Boop. I see. And there. See. And we can actually launch that if we wanted to. Now I'm just going to quickly drop a capsule on top. And oh, by the way, that's the flag I'm currently using. <laughs> Terrestrial Experimentals. Or TX for the TX03 that you can see there. Hello, TX03. <laughs> So if we just quickly uh, pop this crew, hello, that's our standard crew as you know, let's just very quickly pop out Frederick Kerman, pop into our team, he's an engineer, hello engineers, and pop him into the capsule. This is just, I want to show you something, so onto the launch pad we go. Now I'm going to quickly go through the mods we're using. Uh, I, said, I said first thing we'll do, we're going we're to be renaming the Kerbals after subscribers. That's correct, we will be doing. So how? Well, we have a, we have a good, we have Frederick Kerman there, and we have a program called Crew Manifest. What we'll be doing is we'll be hiring our Kerbals, boop, and we have Frederick right there. What we'll be doing with this is we'll be using Edit, and we'll be renaming these people. So we can rename these people to anything we want, and we're going to be renaming these to the names of our subscribers. I'm not going to type any names in right now because I haven't got my list of subscribers for random. Well, random people, random number generator. Because I don't want to pick any particular names. It's going to be completely random. Uh, you can get yourself onto the list by either subscribing or by making useful comments in either Twitter or on the comments on the video. Uh, if you do it on multiple places, you get your name in the list twice, and that means you're twice as likely to get picked. Just so you know. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to change any of the stats. Whatever you get allocated, you get allocated. So if David is picked up as a female crew member, with stupidity of maximum and courage at minimum, then David, I'm afraid that's your stats. And we will have you in the game. That is just the way it will be. I'm just going to cancel them change because I do not want to apply them because whoever the first person Kibble will be will be replacing this person. So whoever it is will become Frederick Kerman. You, you'll be renamed that person. The first four, they will be leaving you alone. We're not going to touch those. They will be using them in missions, but they will not be renamed. The straight out, right? I think they're too important to be renamed. Jeb, Bill, Bob and Val, your names are reserved. Okay, so that's the first mod. 
Now that we so we can use the bottom add a kerbal, but jeopardize in, then we'll be picking our crew members as we need it. And when crew members are when we have a spare crew member, they will be put in. If there's no spare crew members because we're all on missions or someone gets killed, we draft another one. That's basically how the rotation will work. Very simple. Okay, good. Alright, other events we will have. Other thing. We have ambient light adjustment. Now ambient light adjustment I will go through in just a moment because it needs to be dark for that to work. But, well actually it doesn't have to be dark. When it goes dark on the side of a planet and you're doing a YouTube video or a live stream, it's kind of hard to see what's happening. Now that I can generally see what I'm doing, but you can't always see it in the videos, and even then I can't always see properly. This allows me to actually change the light. So if I say well, that's where it is now, I can make it darker. I can make it really bright. Dark and bright, dark and bright. So, put it back to where it normally goes. Be about there. Thank you. Yep, that's about right. The sun's somewhere around. And that means we can actually make the dark areas, like when we're building space stations or docking at night, a bit brighter so you guys can see it much easier. The next mod we're going to be using is this one called ScanSat, and it creates a map of the planet below. And it'll show us all the ridges and all the terrain markers and any anomalies and that kind of stuff on the ground, so we can actually map the surface. That one. ScanSat has a small map version as well, and we have the instruments and all the little bits that go with it. So, boop, little instruments there so you can see where we are at the moment. So we've got the, the, map, the scan maps up there, and we also have Kerbal Engineer. Now, Kerbal Engineer, you may have seen it before, let's just bring up the... Thank you. That's just much easier. These are stats that you're normally used to seeing. And I will be using these quite a lot because I do like to see the altitude of a train and stuff. And inclination and they're, they're useful to have around. Let's put them over there because it's probably the most useful place for it. But, but what I've started using more recently is these ones here. These are, sat, are still part of Engineer but they're very useful to have around. Very, very useful to have them there and there. Next one on, we have the Kerbal Alarm Clock. This will be used to find out where and when we'll be launching to go to other planets and when we need to worry about somebody being re-entering and all the sorts of delays. This stops us from forgetting. So that's useful. Uh, that's Crew Manifest over there. Uh, I think that's the end of those mods. And there's one here that I skipped purposely. It's called it's called the Final Frontier. And what it does is it tells you every Kerbin, or Kerbal, it was on a mission. There they are. And it gives you their stats about what they're doing, what craft they're on, and what the status is, and all the normal bits. Nothing overly special there. Except every Kerbal, go away, every Kerbal gets little flags. So there's a the little marker that he's on a mission. If we complete a mission, he'll get a little flag next to his name saying, You have done this mission. And we can actually see what missions individual crew members have been on. Have you been to Duna? Have you been in orbit? You know, what bodies have you landed on? You get a flag for every single thing you do. And as a result, it's like a little history of their job and what they've done in the past. Now, that's quite useful because when your character goes to space, you can see your little flags. If your character gets killed, we can have a little memorial where we bring up the flag and we just boom, in memory of Fingy German. All right. So but that's little flags and you can have little symbols and yeah, look nice and pretty. Hopefully your, your version will be really colourful and not as empty as uh, Frederick's right now. Uh, so get rid of that. So that's a nice one. We also have these clouds hanging around. The clouds, we've just got to, got to zoom out a bit. The clouds are part of the uh, environmental visual enhancement mod. There we go. As you can see, they create very nice clouds on the planets. There's a, a very thin layer of cloud. But as you fly through that layer of cloud, like this, you can see how beautiful that looks. It also makes it very hard to see the runway when you're coming down until you get below a certain altitude. So if imagine you're in a, in a space plane, coming down to try and land, you can't see the runway and to, in the cloud you can't see a thing. And then as you come through, runway, and you're going to line up. And these clouds are on every single planet with an atmosphere, even, uh, I believe they're even on Minmus. I believe even Minmus has a small gaseous cloud layer, which is very interesting. Alright, so I think that's the end of those mods, so let's just get back up to the... Let's revert the flight back to the VAB. And take a look at the main space centre. So we just pop out of there. I think that's actually most, if not all, of the mods. Come on. There we go. Uh, yep, yeah, that's all the mods. Let's just take it out to... There we go. 
this, I'm using Seacan to manage the mods to make sure I always keep the, everything up to date. So these are the mods I'm currently having installed. I may add and remove some mods. You see, I've got, like, for example, I've got the tech tree there. It's entirely useless because we're not actually using the tech tree. So just little things like that. But there's all the mods I'm currently using. Uh, field experience means our Kerbals will actually gain experience. And if you send a, Kerbal, a fresh Kerbal out to Duna, they will gain experience like a normal Kerbal would do for doing their missions. But they will also gain that experience and gain the, the abilities that come with that while on the mission. So as the Kerbal gains experience, you get access to their experience there and then, not when they return home. So it's not a matter of they return home from a long Duna mission and go from a zero star to a four star. They go and you can't access any of those facilities until they get back. Now you get access to them while you're out there. Great. So all the different parts there, we're going to be using all those mods. I say I may remove them, I may add some. I'm not fully set up, but that's what I'm thinking of at the moment. Okay, so that's for that. That's it. We set up. This is our pre-release video. The new video for this is going to be coming out very soon. I'll uh, be launching a first module. The first module is going to be a very quick like communication satellite, uh, just to get things up and running. Uh, maybe an orbital station. I don't know. Uh, but we'll do it. You'll, you'll find out on the day when I do the first episode. And then we'll be going to... We'll go to the moon. We'll go to the... Well, we'll go to Mimus. We'll go to the other planets. And we'll, we'll progress out and we'll build. And we're going to colonise and send out people. I don't know if I'm going to have a life support modules. Let me know, actually. Do you want to see life support added to that mod list? Because there's about four versions of life support. I can pick one. Uh, there's TAC, which is really more very really complicated and hard to use. But I've, I've used it in the past. There's one by Rover Dude, who's uh, one of the developers at Kerbal. Well, yeah, it's, it's one of the developers at Kerbal Space Program. He's, he was hired in to do some of that stuff, and he's a subcontractor. He's done some very, very nice bits. And he's got a life support mod, so we can, we can do one of them, or we can just do it as a pure stock, sort of, no life support sort of scenario. So let me know what you think on that one. So the two things I need from you guys are, well, to come back and watch the next uh, video. But most importantly, the flag. That's the flag we're using right now. That'll be the flag for the first mission, most likely. But if you guys could submit flags to me, great. I will go through the flags that get submitted. If there's an amazing flag I absolutely love and adore, it will probably be the permanent flag to replace that one. Uh, if there's not, then that will be the permanent flag. And if there's flags I like, I'll put it on occasional missions. So I can rotate the flags around a little bit. Be a bit of a nice variety of it. Now, here's the other thing. What I'd like, if possible, could you guys do me a flag for the whole series? Yeah, if there's a really good flag we can have for the whole series that we can actually use for this series, I will happily try it. So let me know what you think. If you've got any ideas, suggestions, if you, if you can't do a flag but you have an idea, let me know and I will happily try and make a flag based on that idea. I can do that myself. So, for now, I think that's uh, all we've got. Let's just do a new... Uh, let's just do something just to finish off because it is Kerbal. We can't have nothing happen in Kerbal. What's that one? Nope, too small. We need something big for the explosion. We're going to get an explosion. Boop. And we'll have the small one on top. Boop. And then we'll need a little nose cone. Nose cone, nose cone, nose cone. Boop. In case you're wondering, I'm looking for an explosion. And I like these as nose cones. Doop, doop. Doop. There we go. Then we need an engine. Ah. Uh, no, I won't go with the big engine. It's slower, less powerful, but you know, does the job just nicely. And then we need a probe, 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 probe. That was you, boop, and boop. And then just to end the episode off, let's go crash a rocket. So we're going to be uh, doing all these missions and everything. We're going to be doing some great stuff. All that said, there is literally only one thing left to do, and that is to take this rocket and see where we can crash it, if we can crash it anywhere. Wow, I made that a little bit too dark, didn't I? Let's there. I don't know where the sun is. I have to keep an eye on where it's just that too. That could be a bit uh, difficult. Anyway, ready for launch. Three, two, one. Launch. Full power to the engine. Where? Full power to the engine. Burn. Powerful. No. Up. Up. Well, I promised you uh, an explosion, so there you go, there's an explosion. And in case you're wondering, the sparks and the sound effect, 
In fact, let's just very quickly go switch that engine out. The sparks and the sound effects of the sort of trashy sounds, that's actually part of the Collision FX model. No, I said change the engine out, not go back to the launch. Yeah, the Collision FX model, it's an amazing little mod. Let's just swap that out with a more powerful engine quickly before we go. Bump. Yeah, it does all sorts of sparking and collisions and like, grindy sounds and basically sound like your craft's about to explode and fall apart. And, oh, yeah, it's, it's a good mod. It's a good mod. So, we will launch. And we'll, all we have to say is, as usual, comment in the comments. Thanks for watching. And we'll uh, see you next time. Also, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. We may need some more kerbals.